Okay, so hit the wrong button. That happens because, you know, I'm just a stupid fly. Because, as we can see, on the other hand, flat earthers don't agree on anything and have no actual measurements of anything. The original post is what a flat earth would have to be based on simple geometry. So, I'm going to try and do it properly this time. Just give me one sec. We are recording and cool. So this is the original post. So with a flat earth 25,000 miles diameter and a local sun 3,000 miles high on this scale, it will never set anywhere close to the horizon. You know, I just want to make this pretty clear that that's their thing. 3,000 miles high, 25... So they think that's to scale. Okay, so I guess that's that's the original post. I'll pause it again for a second. Because now we are going to look through the original Sefer Inslee post, which I responded to. And he says... Come on, Mick, I thought you were smarter than the other donkeys on the earth. I thought that you were aware of the difference between actual height and apparent height. As we move away from an object or as an object moves away from us, its apparent height gets lower until we are 90 degrees or 6,210 miles away from it, at which point it's reached the observer's vanishing point, which is there. Horizon. Polaris's apparent height from the equator. See that? And fuck's sake. I'm... Oh, that's right. I've got to scroll that one up. <laughs> I'm a bum dastard. All right. Polaris's apparent height from the equator is zero. It's no longer visible because from the equator, it's below the horizon. That's why the equator has a latitude of zero. That doesn't mean Polaris's actual height changes. Do you get the point? The sun's actual height never changes. It it only appears to rise from the easterly horizon, 90 degrees easterly until it reaches zenith, then appears to lower as it reaches and disappears below the horizon, 90 degrees westerly. So I could read through this for quite a long time. Andy Patrick said the observer's vanishing point is blah, blah, blah. You know, like, these guys, honestly, I think they have issues. I'll just scroll through, you can... Pause and read. Pause and read. And here's where I jump in with my little 22 cents. This diagram clearly shows, yeah, this to Andy, how the ground beneath the viewer converges upwards to eye level, which creates the convergence point, beyond which every parallel line is eventually obscured, no matter the height. The celestials are all visibly the same height as light itself, only renders visible upon hitting gross physical matter. Well, it's weird looking. In our case, we call this place the firmament, about 70 miles high, though arguably it could be the atmospheric or gaseous firmament B at 12 to 14 miles high, which is the ozone layer, where we see the light itself, even though the source itself originates from the approximately 70 mile high firmament. So Kyle J presents an image like this and again that's one I responded to and ended the discussion. You forgot to have the ground ramp up to eye level. The general ratio is one height to 3000 distance. Then factor in the height of the apparent sun, a minimum of four times higher than distance to every viewer. Your sun is way too low. He's put it about 30 high, if that. It's got to be 3,000. No, the vanishing point is 3,000. We won't go into that now because that's we'll save that for the court case. Um, somebody asked me a question, obviously. It's been deleted. 
Hang on. Let's scroll up and make sure we've got this on all comments. That, see, that's what happens. You have to keep it on all comments. Frustrating, frustrating, frustrating. That's Facebook for you. Um, Mark Kelly jumped in there. We'll save that for another day. In fact, maybe we'll just document it on film real quickly. Screenshot. 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 Do whatever. This is my intention at all times. Still no support and evidence, just claims. Well, what are you expecting? That's what evidence is. It's claims and you either debunk them or you don't. And see, John Ellie jumps in and agrees with me 100%. Claim with quite a lot of... Supporting evidence substantially more than a flat earth expert. God. See, so this this is the fella, Jason Du Blockard, who wants to take me on on a challenge. Oh, man. It'll take me forever to look through all of these. I think what I'll do is just go down to Jason Du Doobie. Lockhart, it's actually worse than that, since the equator is 6,215 miles from the North Pole and the tropics of Capricorn and Cancer are both 1,630 miles from that, the sun would travel in a circle with a diameter varying from 9,170 miles to 15,690 miles, during which time it also somehow illuminates an impressive 80,000 miles circumference of the Earth at once, but not the middle. See, I think the guy is deluded. That's, that's why I feel a bit sorry for him, but he's taken wrong camera. <laughs> All right, so I just commented because I've made my comments on Sephora Inslee's, <laughs> however you pronounce his name, um, up above. So now we have to go through all this again. I can't even remember where I was at. So we'll just don't probably screenshot through most of these. You should be able to get a screenshot on most of these. That's an interesting one. Hang on a second. Sun's path <coughs> in your model doesn't work. You should be able to see the sun from the North Pole as well. It's a whole heap of erroneous claims. I can prove each and every one of them. However... Draw on a piece of paper out of the ground blocks you from seeing three miles, but somehow you can see the sun 10,000 miles away, but also only sometimes. You have no answer. I know because I've asked many times, I need to whoop, get back there. I've asked many times, only to receive no answer. Sephora told me the North Pole to the equator is 6,215 miles and the circumference of the equator is 24,901 miles. That doesn't work on a flat earth. Find a new messiah. Well, here I am. <laughs> Bitch. Um. <laughs> uh, what do I say? Okay, so you need to learn how to differentiate and reconcile the differences between height and distance perspective. With distance, things get smaller, but with height, things get lower. If they're below you, they get higher. Convergence and distance diminution <laughs> are two different 
but related aspects of convergence. <clears throat> I can't even read. So I'm trying to look at two screens, it's hard. Um, convergence and distance diminution are two different but related aspects of perspective. The getting lower phenomenon is actually the space below diminish, diminishing in size, but light itself doesn't shrink. If anything, it diverges with distance, making it appear bigger but less intense. Well, yes, obviously that's addressing his previous comment. It's the mental conditioning and brainwashing that allows you to think that down is relative. Yet in all experience and observations, down is very specific, universal, one way only. All else is delusion, hence why we say it's ridiculous to believe that relative to you, huge ships could possibly be sideways or upside down. That's the sort of realisation every flat earther begins with knowing that just because we were taught that something out of sight, out of mind, was real, doesn't mean it is. Then we checked and checked and checked. Flat Earthers are very well aware of how you fool yourselves, but we're no longer going to let you fool us. You speak specifically of you can derive dozens of experiments that would prove a globe. Burden of proof, buddy. List just one dozen. How about three? I'm not saying three dozen either, I'm just saying three. When I looked all over the internet for a method of measuring this Earth's circumference, every single site had nothing more than the Eratosthenes shadow of sticks method. Every last one at college and university level. It was ridiculous, but you claim dozens of methods. Typical gotta lie and exaggerate and make wild claims to glurth. The sun's path does work because as the sun gets lower towards the firmament, it gets further away. This is if you're in the north part of it. Yeah, I should have... How many words you have to use every time you're just talking on a Facebook comment? So as it gets lower from the north, it will get further away to the south, which I do actually explain. Which means from the north it moves south. So far south it leaves far north in 24-hour darkness. While south has summer, much longer, hotter summer, I would know. I live here. Then as the sun spirals higher by a degree per day, the circuit made in the firmament gets smaller and smaller until it peaks on June 22nd. Here it's making 24-hour light in the north. While we experience winter in the south of the equator, our winter sun always comes from the north, so we orient our buildings that way to take advantage of natural sunlight for extra heating and light, while in the north, buildings are oriented to the south, as the average path is the equator, the two equinoxes. I will take you to court, motherfucker, and earn your ass over that, because you cannot deny that physical fact. And if, for example, we decided to put the sun on the hour hand <coughs> of a 24-hour clock, we could slide it into the Tropic of Cancer on the Flat Earth map. We could slide it out to the Tropic of Capricorn and twice it will pass through the equator, which we call the equinoxes, and just as the hour hand of a 24-hour clock never changes speed, the entire arm moves 15 degrees per hour whether you place the sun at the equator. Sorry, looking at the wrong one. <laughs> Just as the hour hand of the 24-hour clock never changes speed, the entire arm is 15 degrees per hour, either place at the sun, the equator, or either tropic. It's still moving the same speed, 15 degrees per hour. The very thing that you glurfs love to say. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Jason. Duba Lockhart. I'll bet you $1,000 I can list one dozen experiments that prove a globe. To your point on perspective, things continue to the vanishing point forever. They don't disappear. Why is it still light out once the sun goes over the horizon? If it was perspective, it would all be dark. So there he goes. I'll bet you $1,000. So 
So I respond, when I get back online again, to Jason Dubey Lockhart. Okay, mate, let's make this a legal bet and we'll put the funds in the escrow. <coughs> whatever that is, whatever they call it. Winner takes all. However, I only need to debunk one of them to win. I'll give you a better chance and let you provide two dozen methods or experiments. That way I'll have to debunk 13 or more. Let's see you put your money where your mouth is. No more clues for you now, but <laughs> this is business. Any businesses want to step forth? Seth Rinsley, for example, Tony Naum, Jason Jub Lockhart thinks this is going to be fun. Seth and Tony the same guy. Well, yeah, I knew that. Uh, neither is his real name, and both have blocked me, so they're out. I was just asking for a witness. Have a look again. Any witnesses? Um, we'll get a real judge, like an actual legal judge, if you want to play. So you won't be able to say CGI to win. You'll actually have to provide a reasonable standard of proof. So I'm in <coughs> because you won't have it. Let me know what jurisdiction you would like to make our bet in. So, Jason, you know, this is me responding, obviously, because you can see that's my unique thing. Fine, I just said I wanted a witness to the challenge, not a judge. If we're going to make it a legal challenge rather than one of honour, where we accept we've won or lost by ourselves, we'll have to make it at least 10000 plus legal fees all belong to the loser. So Jason accepts that. He says, Ross Thatcher sounds like a deal to me. I know I've already won and know that you don't plan on presenting anything of true substance, so I'm not interested in you just deciding you've debunked something you didn't actually disprove. Let me know the jurisdiction. So Ross Thatcher says back to Jason Dubey Lockhart, I don't have to present anything other than a rebuttal to your assumed dozens of experiments that you can't even begin to mention one. 24 of your best champ, if more than 11 are unable to be falsified or debunked or explained with a better explanation on the stationary plane of earth, you win. The burden of proof is all yours, little buddy. You accepted. Don't renege now. Jason Dubay Lockhart says back to Ross Thatcher, I told you I've already won. Once I provide proof, the burden of proving it wrong is on you. Name the jurisdiction. I'm going to enjoy making an easy 10 Gs. <laughs> I did laugh response to that because I said back to Jason Dubay Lockhart, you keep saying jurisdiction. This is international, mate. You've agreed to a contract by saying yes. I've accepted your unconditional acceptance. Your Facebook account is acceptable identification. This is now a legally binding con contract. Thanks for playing. Would you like to start a new thread specifically for this challenge, or shall I? Neither of us have at this point, because it is, as you can see, still 1939 on the same date. I began the first part of this. No, Facebook is not binding. Oh, so he's he's saying that he can just lie on Facebook. I will not be able to sue you for my 10 Gs based on Facebook. Contracts always have a jurisdiction by which rules of law they go by. You can start a new thread all you want, but we're going to each put up a $10,000 first, sign a contract and agree to who is the arbiter of who wins. I'm going to win and I'm not going to give you the option of backing out. So I did a love response to that because that's beautiful. Okay then, suggest the Jewish mind diction. That's like an old, I think it's, what's his name? Eddie. <laughs> uh, it's a movie. Suck my jurisdiction. <laughs> anyway, you know, like it's international. I don't care. You know, this is, the world is now international, motherfucker.
is a national court of law should be sufficient for two non-fake accounts to make a contract. Are you suggesting you're a fake account? I guarantee you I'm not, because I'm not. I am actually Ross Thatcher. And then I reminded him, realise I'm in Australia. We operate under maritime law, which is international law. We could do it under a Geneva Convention, if you like, or we can do it as gentlemen who live by their word. This could technically make international headlines and make us both very rich. However, I fear that you're simply not up to the task and therefore we must have to set some rules like a... time limit and how much outside help you're allowed. I will only be using Google to check your sources and will debunk all 24 independently. However... I only need to debunk 13 to win. You must positively prove a minimum of 12 to win. You can use all the resources you wish, but once the court case begins, that's when you're on trial for fraud. Agreed. And who... That's Mick Ellis. Was the only one to respond to that. Um, I might be able to... Refresh it. In case I have just refreshed it, it is now 1742. Same date, 30th of May. And at this stage, three hours, he has not responded. So I'm taking this as a legally binding contract. He agreed to it. He says it's not binding, but why wouldn't it be? It's in writing. It's in his name, his identity. I don't care if it's Facebook or a scrap of bloody butcher's paper. It's in writing on his name. He's put his name to it and he says just because of jurisdiction he's going to get out of this. So this is a legally binding contract. He's agreed to it multiple times. He already thinks he's won. I told him the burden of proof is on him says, sounds like a deal to me. I know I've already won. Even though the whole point of it was, if you go right back to the top, was we know your delusion and it doesn't exist. Where do you need that explained? Obviously not because blah, blah. Well, given that we're talking about where you think the sun is and you haven't, blah, blah, I've made it. My opinion is known on other comments, which I've already shown, except for Inslee's. Um, given how many think Australia is upside down, well, no, we just think it's upside down relative. I said, what the? The globe says Australia is upside down relative to those on the Northern Hemisphere. Nobody says Australia is. That was really dumb. Um, the 3,980-mile sun. So this is part of my evidence was assumed for making a triangle with a 500-mile base and a 7.2-degree angle from Eratosthenes' shadow. Nobody even knows how true that story is. There are so many versions. That's of the Eratosthenes story. Um, but ultimately, I'm the opinion that if he left his confirmation bias back in the library of Alexandria and considered that he was on a flat earth with the local sun, his results would have given us the circumference of the sun's path. Considering our model states the equator is twice the sun's path. Uh, sorry. Sorry. Considering our model states the equator is the sun's path at least twice a year on the equinoxes, and the equator matches your fantasy ball circumference, the maths still works. Blah, blah, blah. Screenshot, screenshot. Screenshot, so you don't know what other flat earthers are saying. It's like, I don't care what other flat earthers are saying. I am not other flat earthers. 
and then I addressed all his points, I addressed all his points, I addressed all his points, I'll bet you $1,000 I can list one dozen experiments that prove a globe. To your point on perspective, things continue to the vanishing point forever. They don't disappear. Why is it still light out once the sun goes over the horizon? Well, that that applies to the globe anyway. If it was perspective, it would all be dark. No, if it was the globe, it would all be dark. Um, I didn't even argue that because he's just really dumb. So I said, OK, let's make this a legal bet and we'll put the funds into a scrow or whatever they call it, winner takes all. However, only need to debunk one of them to win. And then I said, because I know that you won't come up with a dozen, I said, I'll give you a better chance and let you provide two dozen methods or experiments. That way, I'll have to debunk 13 or more. Let's see you put your money where your mouth is. No more clues for you now. Because, yeah, why am I going to go and give him my <laughs> my information that he's trying to win money off me for? You know, I, I voluntarily give my information freely and readily to trolls all the time on the internet. But this bloke wants to take a thousand bucks off me. And he says this is going to be fun. And then I said, I just wanted a witness to the challenge, not a judge. If we're going to make it a legal challenge, then one, rather than one of honour, where we accept we've won or lost by ourselves, we'll have to make it at least 10000 meaning dollars. You know, for me, it's Australian dollars. For him, it's probably US dollars. So we'll have to meet in the middle there, and we'll, I'll just say US dollars, because... He doesn't seem to differentiate. And he says, sounds like a deal to me. He knows he's already won. All right. So that's the end of this video. You've seen it all. And this is how it's going to go.